Hello guys, this is Engineer Vakas Ahmed and in today's video, I'm going to share with you project planning control, the very important thing, how we have to track our project. There are nine factors we are going to go into the details which we keep in our mind when we are going to track our project, either it is EPC project or oil and gas project. The first most important thing is float. Float is actually representing amount of time or flexibility among our different uh, activity network paths. So how to define it? It's actually the measurement of time that a project task can be delayed without causing a delay to subsequent task or overall project completion date. It is crucial for identifying critical path and managing project schedules. I'll explain this thing in visualization and here move on to the next slide. Here you can see there is a mini project. You can see two paths. One is red color and other one is in green color. The red color is showing actually the critical path of our project and uh, locking our project to complete in 60 days, whereas green path is showing our non-critical path. Uh, you can see there is no flexibility in critical path. It is uh, actually jam-packed within our project start date and completion date. So there is no flexibility. So there is no float. Um, okay. And while on the other hand, there is a green uh, path and we can see there is a gap between, you know, there is a this uh, logic it's starting from here and it's going to complete so we have a flexibility so what is float float is uh, over here and uh, now this path can be delayed up to this extent okay this timeline will be the flexibility of this path we can delay this timeline um, this uh, activity path by this flexible timeline okay so that is called float whereas on the next slide, I will show how critical activities are impacted by delay. So this is actually something happening on site on actual basis and how your delay on critical path is going to push your project completion date ahead of your contractual completion date. So that's how we have to, because in planning phase, uh, float our critical path is locked. But when we are tracking our project, our critical path is also um, continuously changing because in critical uh, tracking phase in monitoring phase it is dynamic it is changing with the passage of time and giving us different pictures when our project is going to complete so that is very important to understand when we are going to track our project so that's how we are going to track our projects and the second most important thing is s curves whenever we are going to represent our project progress there are graphical representations of cumulative cost and man hours or other quantities plotted against time they help in visualizing the progress of project that's what i'm going to explain here uh, that how we can understand there is y axis and there is x axis okay you can understand like that way on whiteboard. So these are the cumulative values. There are cumulative values, okay? And these are the time intervals. Like months, weeks, years will come on this axis, whereas uh, cost, progress, or uh, any other thing which we uh, which we want to relate with our project to monitor progress will be come in the, uh, along this y-axis. Okay, you got my point? Now. Um, when we extrapolate these two data, you know, cumulative uh, progress, cumulative cost, cumulative man hours against time interval, we will get some curve like this. This is called S curve. Why we call S curve? Because it's, it looks like this one. So it is somehow like S. So it is uh, lean in the start of our, our project. Why? Because our preparations in the start of our project will not require any much work. So once our project will be on this stage, it will be expedited, maximum uh, progress will be extracted. And then at the end, again, you know, lean activities or slower activities will be done. A smaller uh, amount of time, uh, amount of cost will be incurred. So that's why. So this S curve will help us to understand that, let's say I will cut off this date. This is June 2024. And uh, I want to see that how it can help me so I can extrapolate. On this here, it can give me a value that till June 2024, uh, for this, my project, I need, maybe there is some figure 100, I need 100 million dollars, I need 100,000 man hours, whatever you have plotted over here along y-axis. So that's how S-curve is actually helping me out. 
on the other hand if i will change the color um, uh, when a site progress is going on and we are incorporating all the data in our progress sheets then the second this is planning phase s curve then the second uh, s curve will be generated automatically so uh, by visualizing these two s curves it is very understandable that in planning i thought that at this cut off date i would be on this stage whereas in actual i am here so that is variance so a naked eye can help me out to track my project status anybody in stakeholders client anybody can understand same like cricket matches two teams are playing together and uh, we can visualize the performance of each team you can see you can have an uh, idea about that you got it so that's how s curve cash flows are helping out so the next third important thing is earned value management uh, evms uh, schedule variance uh, actually schedule variance uh, it quantifies the difference between uh, the planned and actual progress of the project calculated as the difference between earned value and planned value it indicates whether you are ahead or behind schedule again i will share with you the white board and uh, it's very simple thing actually so how it is helping us that we are going to calculate plan value plan value is actually as per your schedule as per your planning phase what you thought you would be at the stage as per the cut off date and earned value is you know work done as per the schedule these two things is going to give you schedule variance okay earned value divided minus plan value is going to give you schedule variance let's say you um, got 12 percent progress but at cut off date you thought it would be 18 percent and schedule variance is minus 6 percent okay so this is going to give you idea that you are lagging behind by 6 percent okay and same way cost variance uh, the second important thing this indicates measure the difference between the budgeted cost of work performed and the actual cost incurred the formula is cost variance is equal to earned value minus actual cost a positive cost variance indicates a project under budget while a negative value if we will get value for this formula in negative it means we are over budget we are spending more our productivity our cost analysis was poor but if it is positive it means we are going into the benefit and the next is important is about uh, schedule performance in the index spi we have to memorize these things by the formulas that is going to help us so before the two terminologies were the differences were the subtractions and here now we are getting divisions it's a ratio actually that shows the earned value to the planned value before schedule variance was minus earned value minus planned value but now this minus will be you can for the easiness to memorize the things i am actually suggesting you this method so this is actually the efficiency of the time utilized on the project and spi of less than 1 indicates that the project is behind schedule how uh, if this is actually is uh, earned value divided by planned value so the ideal condition uh, when is your project is as, is very accurate and uh, as per the plan you are going that is actually ideal condition not achievable that would be one only in case that this value and this value should be the same 5 by 5 is going to give you one value but that's not the accurate kind of thing it's not uh, actual sometime it's like 4 it's 5 so it's going to give you value something like uh, 0.9 so okay there are ranges for spi okay so it's going to give you you are going below the plan but okay that's fine but uh, if it's greater than one this value it means you are going very good fantastic so there are more things we can understand when we are going to in the details so next thing is cpi it's actually the measurement for our cost ratio now same like cost uh, performance cost variance was earned value minus actual cost okay now there is a division to memorize in easy way so it's a ratio to measure cost efficiency of the project and same way 
you can understand now concept of one that's how you can visualize you can talk in meetings if you will have some figures that your project having value for cpi is 1.27 uh, that's good if it's 0.95 that's not good you can write down in comments why like this okay so i'm actually leaving something up to you so you can write in the comments area so there's another thing tcpi uh, to complete uh, complete performance index uh, is the measure of the cost performance that is required to be achieved with the remaining resources in order to meet a specific management goal calculated as this is budgeted at completion okay this is actually budget budget at completion minus earned value earned value means whatever work has been done will be subtracted from the total budgeted cost then divided by budget at completion same like minus actual cost this is actually you have spent on your project this was as per the schedule work done as per schedule and um, work done actual cost will be both things will be subtracted from planned cost for, of your project and then will be divided and the factor will be given you tcpi that is also a visualization for your kpis and uh, then next estimate at completion uh, predicts the project it's actually forecasting the project's total cost at completion it is particularly useful when the project does not proceed as planned we have one planned cost in our project which when we are bidding our project let's suppose we are given that in 100 million dollar we are going to complete that project but when we are going to proceed our project in actual way our project is not as per the you know uh, planning phase so we have variations so this factor is going to help us uh, how much we are going to spend at the end of our project as per the ground realities on the cutoff date and then we have another factor estimate to complete uh, so estimate to complete is an estimate of the cost needed to complete all remaining project works it is calculated by subtracting the ac from the eac before prior um, terminology was estimate at completion was actually addressing total project cost but estimate to complete is actually addressing um, a certain cutoff date and beyond that like in future works remaining was how much cost you require to complete those things and there is a formula you have to uh, you know eac minus ac is going to so these are the nine important things a planning engineer should keep in mind to prepare a good kpi dashboard i hope you like this video and if you want to learn all these things in very professional way with proper real project industry based practice you can enroll in my upcoming uh, primavera p6 project planning control session thank you very much